So the promise of uh, Bitcoin is not a simple solution uh, that is easy to implement. The promise of Bitcoin is you have the option, right, to take custody or to change your custodians or to change your custodial protocols from time to time over the course of the next thousand years. And, yeah. and you don't have that option with a building. No. And you don't have that option with many other assets or property rights. So Bitcoin gives you the option. I think the custodial options keep getting better. Michael Saylor, the CEO and founder of MicroStrategy, is a highly regarded figure in the cryptocurrency and blockchain industry. In this interview, he shares his profound belief in Bitcoin as the ultimate form of digital property. Staler highlights the advantages of Bitcoin over traditional analog wealth, emphasizing its immunity to confiscation and corruption. He emphasizes that Bitcoin grants individual unconditional property rights as the power to destroy something signifies ownership. In a new Bloomberg interview, Saylor says that a massive rise in value is likely in the cards for Bitcoin now that the general public is beginning to appreciate Bitcoin's unique position. According to Saylor, retail investors are starting to realize that nothing could replace Bitcoin. I think there's been a lot of confusion because of the 25,000 other cryptos and because of all the crypto securities that have been angling to position themselves as the next Bitcoin or a better Bitcoin. So now I think that the public is beginning to realize that Bitcoin is the next Bitcoin. The next logical step is for Bitcoin to 10x from here and then 10x again. Eventually, I have confidence that crypto exchanges will come around to realizing that Bitcoin really is the dominant asset in this space. Additionally, Saylor emphasizes that Bitcoin is immortal property, meaning it can be accumulated over time and conveyed into the distant future. This is in contrast to physical assets like pyramids, buildings, or land, which cannot be preserved for thousands of years. By entrusting Bitcoin to ad programs or time-locking it in satellites, one can ensure its preservation for longer term. We will now present you with clips from Michael Saylor's interview with Consensus Network. Before we proceed, please ensure that you subscribe to our channel and click the bell icon to stay updated. I think Bitcoin is the first perfected digital property. And all the other property, all the other wealth we have in the world is uh, analog wealth. So all analog property can be confiscated, seized, either by violence or by corruption. So, the, so analog properties encourage corruption, they encourage violence, either state-sanctioned violence or criminal violence, and they encourage politics and legal manipulation to steal your property or confiscate it one way or the other. And that's been the case for all of human history. So to the extent that you convert property into a digital form, and that digital form can manifest itself on a hardware wallet or a seed phrase plate or in your head, however it's manifested, you now, you now have the ability to destroy the property by destroying the information, which you can't do with analog property. If you, if you own a vault of gold, yeah. in fact, you can't destroy it. So if you owned a building or a company or even a bunch of bonds, you know, to give you a claim on a government, you can't destroy them by destroying the information. Eventually a custodian or a government can reclaim them. So in that sense, the human doesn't really have the power over their own property. They don't have the property right. They have a conditional property right based upon their political standing or their physical strength. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin gives the human being an unconditional property right because the power to, to destroy something is the ownership of the something. It's a line yeah. from Dune, by the way, if you remember oh. Frank Herbert, where they oh, yeah. talk about the spice and they say the oh, yeah. power to destroy the spice is, is power over the spice. In this case, um, the power to destroy the property means you have an unfettered right to the property. The power to transport or convey the property is another right. All these other properties, you don't have the right to convey and you don't have the right uh, you don't have the power to convey or the power to destroy. So I think Bitcoin is a breakthrough in those two ways. The third way it's a breakthrough is, is it's immortal property. 
So you can, in theory, accumulate a massive amount of property and find a way to convey it 10,000 years into the future. You can't do that with even a pyramid. You can't do it with a building. You can't do it with any stock or bond or piece of land. But, you know, you can entrust the Bitcoin to an AI program, put it on a satellite, maybe time lock it. Yeah. yeah. And it'll still be there. So... I think the the implication of that is that in a world of digital property, there's an in, there's a disincentive to violence and a disincentive to corruption for lots of reasons. Um, there's always an incentive to negotiation because you're uh, you know you're negotiating to get. During the interview, Michael Saylor expresses his belief in the genius of the Bitcoin network security as it is secured by digital power. Saylor goes on to predict that Bitcoin's share of the crypto market cap could rise to as high as 80%. Saylor recently mentioned that eventually I have confidence that the crypto exchanges will come around to realizing that Bitcoin really is the dominant asset in this space, and their business models are fine when Bitcoin goes up by a factor of 10. He emphasizes that the genius of the network's design lies in the actions of miners over the course of several years. Their investments in ASIC hashing power have created a protective wall of encrypted energy around the network. He emphasizes that for Bitcoin to endure indefinitely, it must be passed down from one generation to the next. Staler emphasizes that the longevity of Bitcoin mainly relies on human engagement. The technology alone cannot sustain itself for the next 10,000 years without the active participation and commitment of individuals to uphold the principles and ideals that underpin the Bitcoin network. Let's get back to interview. The genius of the Bitcoin network is that it's not secured by energy, it's secured by digital or not, not by power, but by digital power. Analog power could be measured in gigawatts, but digital power is going to be measured in exahash. And exahash is a specialty protocol, and that means that if you want to attack the network with commodity money, you need all the money in the world. If you want to attack it with commodity electricity, you need all the electricity in the world. And if you want to attack it with commodity compute CPUs, you need all the computers in the world. Mm. And I'll, if I give you all the money in the world, and then you buy all the electricity world and all the computers in the world, maybe you get 25% of the hash rate of mm. the Bitcoin network, which means that one out of every four blocks you get to control, but the other blocks still go through. So, mm. so I, I would say, you know, the, the genius of the network design is that after 10 to 12 years, the action of the miners and the investment that the miners have made in the ASIC hashing power has created a wall of encrypted energy around the network. And behind that wall, everyone is able to store their money, create their applications, Right, secure secure their products and services and build that economy. So we're we're building an economy in cyberspace secured by uh, a cryptographic wall or a, di a wall of digital power that's that's secure enough that there's no force on Earth that can really break through that at this point. Ultimately, I I still think. It's a it's a balance it's a natural balance it's it's pretty important that bitcoin consist of gigawatts of energy we need we need elect, real raw analog energy to be uh, a basis of the network but it's also important that we have all of the millions of asic miners and the semiconductors and that hash wall and it's very important that we have a very distributed set of nodes for validating the system. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin is, a, in a way, it's a virus, and the virus spreads. Mind and virus. Reproduces yeah. through the people. So ultimately, the reason that if Bitcoin is going to last forever, then it's going to have to be passed from you to your children, to your children's children, to your children's yeah. children's children. And each generation that adopts Bitcoin has to, has to adopt not just the technology, but it has to adopt the ideology 
right? At the point because at the point that you know the future generation becomes corrupted and they forget the ideology of Bitcoin, then they will attempt to corrupt it one way or the other. Yeah, and uh, and that would be not good. So the the technology itself can't propagate itself for the next 10,000 years without. Mm. Looking ahead, it is evident that Bitcoin has garnered significant attention and recognition as the premier digital asset. With the general public increasingly realizing its unique position and distinct qualities, Bitcoin is poised for a remarkable future. In light of the insights shared by Michael Saylor regarding the potential of Bitcoin and its role as a perfect form of digital property, do you believe in Bitcoin's unique characteristics and secure network design position in as the dominant asset in the cryptocurrency space for years to come? Share your perspectives in comment section below. If you find this video informative, don't forget to show your support towards our channel by giving this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to turn on notifications to stay informed about our latest videos covering more interesting topics. Thank you for watching.